What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the new preview version of Twin Motion, version 2022.2. So this is a massive new update because it brings with it access to a completely new library of models inside of Twin Motion. Let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so first off, remember that you can download Twin Motion by going to the Epic Games launcher, going to the Twin Motion tab. And specifically in this case, you wanna to go to the drop down right here and you want to find the Twin Motion 2022.2 preview. Note that the preview version is obviously a preview version, meaning it's not 100% complete, so be a little bit careful using it for production work. I don't think there's really any issues with it, but just be aware of that. All right, so second of all, you can see everything about this new version by going to the Twin Motion 2022.2 release notes, which I will link to in the notes down below. This is gonna talk about everything that's been changed and adjusted in this new version. So you can go through this and read about these in more detail. But I wanna to get to the first change because it's absolutely massive. So we now have Sketchfab support inside of Twin Motion. And so remember that Sketchfab is a massive library of 3D models that you can download and use. So you might remember that last year, um, I think it was July of last year, Epic Games actually acquired Sketchfab. So um, Epic Games has been acquiring a lot of different software. That's how they ended up with Twin Motion. And it's kind of an expansion of their overall um, first off strategy for just uh, purchasing some of the big players and kind of integrating them into their software. But second of all, it really gave them access to a gigantic library of 3D models. And remember that Sketchfab has a ton of different kinds of 3D models inside of it, right? So it's got everything from models from architecture, it's got people models, it's got all sorts of crazy vehicle models. It's just a massive library of models. Well, now we can access these inside of Twin Motion. So how do you do that? It's really simple to do. So when you open up Twin Motion, and we'll use the lake house retreat scene for right here, and let's just bring something in. Um, what you wanna do is you wanna look in the library tab on the left-hand side of the page. I'm gonna click on this and notice how there's a number of different categories in here. So you can click on any of the different categories in order to bring something in. So in this particular situation, for example, let's say we wanted to bring in a vehicle. And so notice how this is gonna pop up a number of different model files that you can mouse over in order to get more information about them. Well, in this case, I wanna bring in this hover bike model. Remember that with Sketchfab models, some of these models have been uploaded with a certain license. So in this case, for example, this one is Creative Commons Attributions, meaning you can use it for commercial use, but you have to, you have to credit the author. So you have to credit Tups M um, as the creator of the Hoverbike model. If you want a link, you can click on the Open and Sketchfab button. That's gonna open up a window that gives you more information about the model. So you can actually link to it if you decide to do that. But let's say that we wanted to bring this model in, what we can do is we can click on the button right here to download it. And so that's gonna download here in the background. And when it's done downloading, you can actually import it into your model. And this is going to set up all the different material maps about this model, other things like that. One thing to note about this is this model right here, um, as it's, we're gonna let it download in the background. Notice how this model has an animation tied to it. At the moment, I don't believe there is support in here for the actual animation of the object. I think it's just gonna come in as a static model, but we're gonna let this finish downloading. And then you can click to bring it into Twin Motion. Notice how it's going to take a minute because it's going to come in here and it's going to create. Um, it's going to create that model. It's also going to apply different things about it. So, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to find it right here. One thing to note about this is depending on how these have been models, they modeled, they may come in at a larger scale, and you may have to bring those down. So all we have to do to do that is just go to our scale option right here and just bring this down. So something like this. So just something to be aware of. Um, I don't think it's really a game changer or a huge deal one way or the other, but notice we're actually able to bring this model in and look at it inside of Twin Motion. And so note that currently the animations are not supported inside of Twin Motion. So if you did want this to animate or hover or anything like that, you'd have to try to do something manually, but it's still really impressive that we get access to all of these different kinds of models inside of Twin Motion for no additional cost. And so one thing that's worth noting about this is there are a few 
limitations. They're not massive. Like for example, all of the objects get collapsed and the geometry can't be edited. Um, I'm kind of on board with that because otherwise you'd have all sorts of nested stuff in here that you don't want to have to deal with. Um, in addition, some like complex shaders like frosted glass or sheen just get converted to generic uh, twin motion materials. So you might have to go in and make some adjustments to those. So that could affect the way that this works. Overall, not going to be a big deal, I don't think, except for uh, very specific models. Um, I do want to note there are some other options in here. Or there are some other things that were now added. So for example, you can now import the GLTF files into Twin Motion. Um, again, note that those same limitations do apply, basically the same limitations that you had with the Sketchfab models and materials, but you can now import those. Animations are currently not supported. They've also added a high resolution export option. So you can now export at higher resolutions without being limited by your GPU memory. So you can just go to your output size and custom. So now if you go to your images under more and you go to your format, you want to set your output size to custom and under more there's an option to toggle on higher resolution. And so once you do that, you can type in larger values. So something like this. You can now export those higher resolution images using these settings. Uh, note that there are some limitations with some screen space effects that are in here. You can read about those by mousing over this button right here. So the higher res resolution export has been added. In addition, there's also a 16K resolution panorama export. So you can export a higher resolution panorama. So this one could be massive if you work with any of these design software. So Max, Revit, ArchiCAD, or Rhino. Um, the lights in those files um, are now translated through Datasmith, meaning that it's going to try to set up your lights in your model based on the lights that you've set up in those programs. That could be a massive time saver if you do a lot of light setup in those programs. Um, it's going to try to bring those in and set them up in a consistent way with what you had set up in your program. Note that there are some current limitations which you can read about on this page. So there's also a feature in here where you can specify a destination path where it's gonna cache your textures. I'm not 100% sure what this is related to. So I assume that what was happening is people were clearing their caches and they were losing those cache textures from the direct link, but I'm not really sure. That's something you're just gonna to have to kind of play around with because I'm not 100% sure what the issue was that this was trying to solve. So the light types are now represented by icons. So for example, if we jump back into our scene, I've added an area light, an IES light, a spotlight, and an omnidirectional light. Well, notice how each one of these has a different icon over here so you can see what it is. You can see that this is an omnidirectional light, so even if we rename it, we can see what kind of light it is. So these icons are gonna help you see what the lights are even if you rename them. So that could be really helpful for keeping your model organized and quickly selecting things in your rendering. And then this last one here, they're saying they've added standard RBG colors to the gizmo. This one I don't understand because I thought that it always had RGB colors, so maybe I'm just not understanding properly what it does here um, but like for example I thought these were always red green and blue so I'm not really sure what changed with that one but there has been a change noted there with that gizmo as well I did want to announce that I'm currently working on a twin motion course so um, this will be my first rendering course. Um, a lot of you have heard of my SketchUp course, but this is something where I want to get a lot more in-depth on actual rendering itself. So if that's something you're interested in, I will link to a page where you can sign up to get more information as it comes out. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.